316! 316, guys! <laughs> Hey guys, it's Bina, and in today's video, I want to talk about the Glacier Rune Master build, uh, which is this build here, 3 hit Glacier, massive AoE, decent damage, extremely fast, extremely tanky, um, great AoE, it has a lot of upsides and not many downsides, in my opinion, this is like one of the, if it's not S tier, it's like A++, it's not, it's not like tier 0, it's not in the, in the, in the, in the same vein as, for example, Rate Lord, or like Jelcor's dagger, uh, Jelcor's explosive trap with like a detonating arrow or stuff like that. But it's like extremely, extremely good. And I'll show you exactly how good it is right now. And uh, we're gonna go over tier four Jilra, um, a 400 corruption boss, a thousand corruption echo, and a thousand corruption boss. And then we'll talk about the build. So let's first start off with the tier four D Jilra kill. Um, on this fight, I will use this. I use fighting chance usually to get uh, some more movement speed. We don't need this. And I use also Avian Puppet uh, to get as well more effective haste for more movement speed. But on this fight, we don't need this. So I just go like this. So let's go straight into the fight. Uh, we are using wrong warp. We are using wrong warp, which gives us increased damage based on our movement speed, which is extremely effective when you're stacking a lot of movement speed, right? So, as you can see, the tankiness is good, the damage is good, it's not crazy, crazy damage, uh, it's not absolutely crazy tankiness, but it's still, in my opinion, uh, like, Ward next patch is likely going to get the change. So, this is gonna still gonna be way less, probably, but, um, at the moment, it's extremely good. So, that was a tier 4 Jolra kill. Let's go into the 400 Corruption Black Sun, I'll show you the, against the boss fight. Um, yeah, so this build you can start as early as level five or as soon as you have five points into your, um, is, is it five points? As soon as you unlock Glacier, which is one of the first abilities in chapter one. Uh, so 452 corruption. Let's go into this fight. As soon as you put it on your bar, it feels good and it feels good all the way through. And it like, it just, it's the, one of the smoothest leveling experience you will encounter ever in, in last epoch. So, 452 Corruption. Let's see how this goes. This should be fairly decent. Um, at 452 Corruption, you can certainly tank a lot of stuff as well. As you can see, not the craziest DPS, but also not the worst, right? You can essentially stand in these things in um, in this low corruption. So you are quite tanky. Arguably, my gear is pretty good, but even on worse gear, right? Uh, let's keep this. And then let's go on a 1000 corruption fight. So here, 1027 corruption. We'll do one echo and then we'll go fight the boss. So, during Echoes, I like to use Fighting Chance, which I have 4 LP. And I like to use Avian Puppet uh, to get the increased effect of Haste, but you don't have to. Because if you want to get 100% Critical Strike Chance, you want to use at least 3% Spell Crit on a Catalyst. But I go for this, and with this setup, I can actually reach a uh, very, very high moving speed. As you can see, I have, I'm at 219 moving speed almost permanently here. Um, 219 moving speed feels extremely fast for last epoch it is one of the fastest movement speed build in the entire game uh, that actually feels good with as much investment with movement speed because with wrong warp you actually get three percent of your um like for each one percent movement speed you get three percent increased spell damage so that movement speed is not wasted you can actually use double arboreal circuit on this build and then it actually makes a lot of sense you know, our Arbor arboreal circuit gets access to 18% movement speed. These are the rings, um, the best movement speed rings in the game, and you can have up to 18% movement speed on them. Easily, easily obtainable with one or two LP, possibly even three. It has a legendary potential of 70. 
And um, as you can see, 1,000 corruption is just, you know, we, we are absolutely blasting still. Mobs are a bit tankier. No problem with the with defense whatsoever. And that is it. So these rings here are Boreal Circuit. Extremely good. I'm going for all the movement speed stuff. Ward Trail with movement speed. Fighting Chance movement speed. I have the boots which have movement speed and effective haste. And haste after using a traversal skill. We'll go over the gear afterwards. But um, that was a 1000 Corruption Echo. And now let's go into a 1000 Corruption Boss. Which has uh, no modifier except 35% chance to shred. So we are going to swap to... Our Manifuse Crystal here because we want to get the crit, critical strike chance. Crit chance is important to get to 100% on single target, especially. And you are you want to get as close to 1566 mana to sustain your mana uh, permanently against single target on every hit. Uh, if you have a little bit lower, it doesn't really matter. You can still make it work. But it and if you have higher, you will get more ward and you will sustain your mana more efficiently. Another thing to note is that as of this patch, Wrong Warp has a um, the locking mechanic, right? So every time that, that you use Teleport, Wrong Warp will lock enemies around you. And th that is a very, very OP CC uh, that you can basically use to kind of stun lock Emperor of Corpses. He's not actually stun locked because he starts moving, but like his channel time is actually long enough so that you can use it and if you get more cooldown um you know you can practically stun lock it sometimes it does fail so you have to kind of be careful uh but it that is not the reason why we're using we are using wrong warp even if they remove that ability from wrong warp that would still be our weapon of choice and it's still extremely powerful um i would rather see them remove it to be honest because i think it's like kind of busted and a bit too op but we shall see, right? Uh, so this is a thousand corruption, Emperor of Corpse. No problem whatsoever. Um, it's just a really, really, really good build. All right, so we didn't find anything here. So now we are gonna go over uh, what we are using in terms of gear, in terms of blessing, in terms of skills and our passives, right? So let's start with the gear. Uh, for our gear, the most important part about this build we're going to talk about this here. We're going to talk about Lost Knowledge. Lost Knowledge is um, a skill. It, it, it's it's a passive that gives you ward based on your current mana. When you use a skill, it costs at least 40 mana. So currently how it's set up, Glacier costs 47 mana. So we are going to get 5 mana per 10 current, uh, 5 ward per 10 current mana. So that is why we are stacking mana as much as possible. So we are a mana stacking build to make good use of lost knowledge. And how do we sustain our mana? Well, Glacier sustains its mana by uh, critical rejuvenation. Each crit with Glacier grants mana equal to a percentage of your maximum mana. So this synergizes very, very, very well with lost knowledge that gives us ward. And then each of our crits will give us mana back. So we sustain our mana and we keep our mana at our maximum at all times. So that is the main uh, mechanic that will enable us to sustain our mana, be able to spam Glacier so long as we're hitting stuff, and then we're also getting a lot of ward out of it. This, the, like, the, the bread and butter of the build is this. So, we are using Wrong Warp as our weapon. Um, Wrong Warp is really good because it will give you um, spell damage per increased movement speed. What I was trying to achieve with this build, so, like, there's a different couple of variations you could do. I was trying to achieve as much movement speed as possible. So I really like to go fast. And I wanted to reach at the very minimum 200. But with Fighting Chance and Avian Puppet, you can reach even higher, 219. And you can do some shenanigans with like Shard of the Shattered Lands. Or like if, if you have like even better boots, maybe double tier 7. But like that's kind of pushing it, right? Already having tier 7 increased effective haste and tier 6 increased movement speed is like, um, you know, it's a, it's a very, very min-max piece of gear. Uh, seconds of haste after using a traversal skill alongside wrong warp is really, really good because it, you have more incentive to spam your teleport. Um, you have more incentive to do so. So you will always have haste and you will always have your wrong warp chrono warp boost, which, which grants you cast speed and movement speed. So wrong warp gives you cast speed, 
movement speed, a huge amount of spell damage with my current movement speed. It's at the minimum 600% uh, spell damage. So that item alone gives you so, so much value. And the uh, effective level for legendary potential is kind of low. So it's easy to get with at least one, two, even maybe three LP. Um, the downside of wrong warp is that it will tell it like it stops your teleport from being actually a targeted ability and it will just teleport you randomly around the target where you start. So, um, yeah, that is one downside. We get a lot of movement speed, but you cannot go exactly where you want. So it doesn't mean that you will do echoes faster than a, a build that has less movement speed. But um, in my opinion, movement speed is the best set in the game and it allows you to like move out of the way faster out of any telegraphed attacks. And also it's a fun factor because like play the same exact build with 100% movement speed or 200% movement speed. And you will notice that your fun factor gets multiplied greatly when you play with more movement speed. At least that is how I feel. So it is a very subjective opinion. But this is what I was trying to achieve with this build. It was as much movement speed as possible and trying to make it make sense. And then wrong warp really makes all of this makes a lot of sense because you get so much spell damage per every point of movement speed that you get. Um, yeah, wrong warp is a must. Now let's go over this peak of the mountain. Pretty straightforward. We're using peak of the mountain because we are not we don't need any leech whatsoever. We are using ward as our main form of defense. And then we we want to reach 100% crit chance um, as easily as possible with as and and with with as the least pressure on our gear as possible as well. So the critical strike chance, the base crit that we get from Resplendent Frost in Glacier here, uh, alongside Peak of the Mountain and alongside our Manifuse Crystal for 3% spell crit, it's gonna make us um, reach our crit cap very very easily. Because of this node here, calculated the destruction in the sorcerer tree, you get 3% um, uh, critical strike chance per int. So we are stacking int as well. And so we're getting a lot of critical strike chance there, a lot of crit chance here. So we are capped on crit very, very easily. So peak of the mountain, pretty straightforward. Unstable core, we're trying to stack as much mana as possible. Unstable core has a very nice possible mana roll. Ranges from 10 to 120. You want to get in an unstable core with as much mana as possible. That is literally the only stat you're really looking for. And then it also has an implicit of increased mana. Increased mana is extremely powerful as well. So try to get a good one with like maybe one LP and slam mana on it. That's going to make it so much easier for you to uh, reach the... The magic number for mana should be around 1566. But I like to go a little bit overboard and try to reach 1600. Um, though that is going to be pretty difficult uh, if you don't have a lot of exalted rolls. Uh, but we'll talk about a way that you can mitigate this if you don't have a lot of mana and still play the build to get to the point where you have enough mana. And like there's slight changes that you can do here and there to help you out with this. This also gives you plus one to skills, to uh, lightning, fire, and cold skills. So that's going to help you with your skills here. We are using Ward Trail because it has movement speed. Uh, it's literally the only reason if you don't have a war trail with a lot of LP You can just use a regular belt and you can use basically any belt. Uh, it, this is not mandatory It's just a min max for movement speed because we are using wrong warp and I was trying to achieve as much movement speed as possible uh, I'm gonna say the pair of boots are very important Don't use a unique pair of boots early on um, I would heavily suggest just using a Effective haste after using uh, effective haste and haste after using a traversal skill. This is a stat that you want tier six or tier seven because at tier five you're you are not gonna get the full uptime on your haste, so you will not have as much movement speed. And teleport does have a quite significant cooldown on it. Uh, we are not specking teleport on this on this uh, version of the build that I'm doing. So getting this to tier six or tier seven will will enable you to get haste for long enough to have permanent uptime on it. And so that's gonna be that's gonna be a big boost for uh, wrong warp for the spell damage. And it's just as a feel good for the movement speed. And then you get movement speed as well, um, tier five or tier, tier six or seven, whatever, whatever you can get your hands on. Uh, ideally, you get both of these stats uh, exalted, but when you're starting out, 
try to get at least tier 6 effective haste and tier 5 movement speed. And that's going to be good enough, right? Fix your resistances with whatever else on the regular Exalted Pyramid. But I went for the Transient Rest for the Best in Slot version because they had Physical Poison and Necrotic Res, which will help me cap my resistances more easily. Um, and they also have 58% of current mana gain as ward when you stop moving. So because we're stacking so much mana, um, these makes a lot of sense on the build. And they will give you every two sec uh, when you stop moving, also include whenever you cast, whenever you teleport. So you will always be getting this no matter what, right? Because as you are moving through the echoes, you are essentially holding down Runic Invocation, holding down Teleport, and holding down Ice Barrage, which gives you a lot of buffs, and then you're just moving like this, right? And so you will always get the nice um, the nice current mana gain as ward when you stop moving, and you're stacking so much, so that's going to help you with your ward even more. Fighting Chance, as I said, it's only for movement speed. These have a very bad downside of increased damage taken, but I'm I'm at 1,000 Corruption. I don't even I don't even need to like get tankier. Uh, you could certainly get tankier, but like I've had no problem running with Fighting Chance with the increased damage taken. Um, I'm getting them for the movement speed. These are very cheap. If you're playing MG, these are very cheap to get three LP. Four LP was also pretty cheap, so I got like cast speed mana, armor shred, and alien res on this, uh, which is like absolutely bonkers. I love I love this piece of gear. I don't always use it because usually tankiness is a problem, but on this build, tankiness is actually not a problem. So that is very nice. Um, for my relic, there are other relics that you could be using, but I'm I am using this one because you need to get frailty somewhere on your build. Either you get it on you get it on your gloves, on your amulet, or on your relic, right? Frailty is a big source of like uh, damage mitigation. So sealing frailty makes a lot of sense. Getting the two suffixes that we're able to roll some resistances on here is really good as well. I'm putting mana here. It has a mana base, uh, a mana implicit, and mana spent gain as ward. So a lot of synergy for the build. Uh, I have intelligence here. You could have something like crit multi. Uh, you could have cast speed. So the three stats, that the three offensive stats that you're looking for, whether it is uh, on any piece of gear, is going to be mana, intelligence, cast speed, and Critical Strike Multiplier. These are the four stats that you're trying to get. So try to get a balance of them either on your Catalyst, on your Relic, on your um, on your Gloves, and on your Weapon, right? And your Amulet as well. Uh, you can get... Um, so I've tried to slam Mana on my Orin's Eye, but I was not able to. So uh, try to get for a big Mana roll on Orin's Eye as well. But yeah, Mana, Intelligence, Cast Speed... Critical Strike Multiplier, and am I forgetting one? That, that's pretty much it, right? Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going for. I forgot to say on the gloves, the armor chance to shred armor on hit. This is a must-have. This is the only piece of gear will, where you will have armor shred, unless you are not using Orin's Eye and you're using a, a regular Exalted Amulet. Um, chance to shred armor on hit is a big multiplier for your damage, and you must have at least this on your glove like it's a it's an absolute must and don't forget it if you feel like you're lacking damage just slamming tier 5 armor shred on hit on your gloves will increase your dps dramatically um for our catalyst i am using a crystal skull with mana crit multi poison res la res this is only this is good to get uh the base spell critical strike chance so you don't need to have four five or six percent base spell crit chance on this you can use only a 3% base and still reach 100% Critical Strike chance very easily without any extra investment. Because, again, as I said, because of Calculated Destruction, which gives you Critical Strike chance per int, you get some base crit here, you get some Critical Strike chance on peak, and you also get base crit chance on, um, on actual Glacier tree. So, 3% is the only thing that you need on here, and Orion's Eye... Orion's Eye makes you able to not invest into Void Res at all and still get even more mitigation than if you would invest 75% into Void uh, Void Res. Because you have less fire damage taken and you take 100% of your Void damage is taken as fire. So it's actually better for uh, fire and Void damage to use Orion's Eye. It also has like a huge mana roll 
And if you're able to get a 1 LP or 2 LP Orange Eye and slam tier 7 mana on this, it's going to make it incredibly good. Uh, so that is it for the gear section. The idols are super important, but also extremely hard to get. I don't even have a single... Oh, yes, I forgot about rings, actually. Um, Arboreal Circuit. One of my... Fa probably my favorite item in the entire game. Arboreal Circuit can get up to 18% movement speed. Which, in turns, comes in close to 60% increased spell damage. Because you're getting 3% spell damage per 1% increased movement speed. So, with Wrong Warp, these make a lot of sense, right? And then you can get... Um, a 1 LP Arboreal Circuit will be extremely cheap and extremely easy to find. So try to get Intelligence here. And then if you get 2 or 3 LP, try to slam whatever else you can here. I did not get the Tier uh, the tier 7 in Intelligence on this one. I only got Spell Damage. But um, you see I have 18% and 17% increased movement speed. That is what I was looking for. Another nice thing about Arboreal Circuit is that the chance of someone an Illusory Tree when hit... Illusory Tree is a decoy which will grab aggro off of you on pretty much the entire screen and the entire map. So it's a it's kind of like another defensive layer where if you get hit, you have a chance of summon the tree, which is a decoy, which like basically lets you um, reposition without monsters following you. They will follow the decoy and then you can like hit monsters uh, freely and safely from uh, wherever you are at the moment. Okay, let's go over the idols. The idols, I don't even have a single idol um, with the rolls that I want. I went for 8% increased armor and 8% increased mana because these were cheaper on the market. Um, you want to get a big mana roll here. And ideally, you would have a prefix for mana as well, right? Flat mana prefix, grand idol, and increased mana suffix, uh, grand idol. So I have one Ornate Idol here as well, um, because I needed more mana. If you really want to, you can like not use Throne of Ambition and use two Ornate Glass Idols instead to get even more mana, the 12%. Um, but yeah, if you have good gear, you would have flat mana and increased mana. Four of these Grand Idols. Throne of Ambition. Throne of Ambition, really, it's only there for bosses. During mapping, it's kind of useless. You don't have... Sorry, you don't have the stacks for long enough for it to really matter. So the more cold damage, you'll get a little bit here and there. Uh, the more armor, you'll get a little bit here and there. But you will lose your stacks all the time inside of Echoes. It's only there for um, big boss fights where you will get the cold damage. Um, all the stack, the 20 stacks, pretty much all the time. And you'll get the armor and the cold damage. So feel free to mess around with Throne of Ambition with or without. And like... Put more mana or like fix your resistances with some other idols and here i'm just fixing my necrotic res and i'm fixing uh my cold res i'm not captain cold res but like i mean this build is so tanky i've played this build for the most part without like with like half of my resistances and it went just fine for the blessings here uh the important ones is going to be crit critical strike multiplier of course mana you want to try to get a very very high roll on the grand light of the moon uh to get as much mana as possible the Grand Resolve of, of Humanity for 20% all res. Very good to cap your res. Shred Cold Res on hit. Straightforward, it's just damage. And then the Flat Armor, right? So these are the ones that you get inside of the Black Sun, Ending the Storm, Reign of Dragon, Age of Winter, and Spirit of Fire. So these are the timelines that you want to farm to get your character power blessing. Um, that pretty much covers the gear, the idols, the blessings. Now let's go over the skills. Skills, Glacier is your main damage ability. Uh, the first thing, as you level up with Glacier, you will want to go here first, right? Because early on, you won't sustain your mana. Like, the build will not be, like, all um, synergizing very well together. So you just want to get as much damage as possible. And then you will use something like um, either Focus or Mana Strike to get your mana back early on while you're leveling. So you go here, here. Largest Explosion Damage, this is what we're going for. Hit damage against random boss, so this is damage, damage. This one is very important for the mana efficiency. So you want to get the 32% mana efficiency to get Glacier to cost 47 mana. So you only need to stack 1,566 um, mana to be mana neutral on your Glacier, on your on three, on three hits Glacier. 
Um, then there are some more damage nodes here. Largest explosion damage and the, uh, hit damage against shield. So that's all of your damage. And then you go down here. Two points for the crit uh, base scroll strike chance. You lose crit multi, but it's it's worth it because you want to go for crit rejuvenation. You have no choice but to go here and grab this for percentage of max maximum mana gain uh, when you crit with glacier. Each glacier cast will cast three glaciers, and so um, against multiple targets, this gives you a lot of mana. Against a single target. That is why you need 1,566 mana to get this. Early on, you can also use this percent of maximum mana gain on kill. If you're having a little bit of trouble um, early sustaining your mana, say you're at like 900 mana or 1,000 mana, you might want to use this, but it makes it very, very easy while mapping and you're killing enemies to, um, you know, sustain all of your mana. So that is pretty much Glacier. Ice Barrage, we're mainly using it for a big, big, big damage boost. So more global cold damage is 60%. So that is the main reason. Everything else is basically fluff, but um, we are like uh, freezing when our ice shield uh, detonates. We have a little bit of cast speed when we freeze with ice barrage, more fire rate to, uh, to apply more armor shred on monsters, and then also the duration so that we have the buffs for longer. So that is pretty much ice barrage. Flame ward, I'm using flame ward for damage because as, as, we, as we've seen, tankiness is not an issue. If you ever come to the point where you need Flame Ward as, uh, to get more tankiness, sure, you can build into, you know, like, uh, elemental damage taken, armor, uh, ward per second, ward retention, stuff like that. But um, you can see that I don't have Flame Ward on my bar here. Why do I have Flame Ward spec? It's because we are proccing it with Frost Wall. As you pass through your, uh, through your Frost Wall, you will cast Flame Ward on yourself, right? So, boom. So now I have all of the buffs from Flame Ward and from Flame uh, and from uh, Frost Wall at the same time. So I'm using this for damage, 250% uh, increase fire damage, which is converted to cold with Frost Guard, uh, Frost Ward. So There's 250 increase cold damage, 10 flat damage. It's also 10 flat cold, um, and then the rest of the points uh, less hit damage. So some tankiness and a lot of damage. Renegivation. Essentially using it for cold fire cold rail winds frost guard. This is um, a skill that will grant you 30% less damage taken and a bunch of um, Ward per second based on your intelligence. So we are stacking some intelligence. So we are gonna get Quite a bit of ward just with this and we're gonna have 30% less damage taken Like we're sustaining 1500 ward only with this and this is gonna be available at all times and it's gonna be permanently up so the main thing we go for here is going to be the spell damage and cast speed with the buff. And so we want to have this buff as much as possible. So we're going for the cooldown here. And then we also want uh, the, the order of the skills on your bar matter because you want to have cold, fire, cold, right? Um, because of immutable order, the runes will accumulate on runification based on the order of the skills on your bar. So we have Ice Barrage as cold. Frost wall is actually trans uh, converted to fire. So this is going to be cold, fire, teleport has no type, runic evocation has no type, and we're going to have a glacier, which is cold. So cold, fire, cold. Um, and so you will only have to hold runic evocation. Then whenever it's, it's off cooldown, you will be able to cast it and it's going to feel good. Uh, cast speed so that we take less time to cast it, right? And then the last point that we have here our chance to be repeated by, by per runic energy. So because we're spending so much mana, we're always going to be at maximum runic energy. So we're going to very, very, uh, very often cast two times um, the runic invocation, cold fire, cold. And we're going to get the burst of ward uh, two times, essentially. But I mean, these points you could put anywhere else, but there's not a lot of value anywhere else in this tree. So that is why we're going for runic invocation and frost wall. We're using it again to get uh, flame ward. When we pass through, you also have Elman Cleanse when we go through it. You get Frenzy as you go through it as well and Haste. But Haste we're already getting with our boots, right? Um, we have some Ward Gain. We're getting the main reason, more damage, the conversion to fire. And then we're getting some Ward stuff and some Ward Synergy. And then the duration, right? So essentially, more damage. It's giving us um, also the Brand of Trespass. 
So because it's covered to fire, it applies the brand on bosses. So against bosses, you want to you want to uh, put your frost wall on them, so that you can make use of this node here, which gives you more spell damage to branded bosses, and also it gives you ward gain um, on hit versus branded bosses. So it makes a lot of sense. This note also gives you flat spell damage, which is essentially really good because we don't have a lot of flat spell, uh, flat spell damage. Um, wrong warp can get up to 60. We have a little bit from here, but it's not permanent. We have a little bit from here, but it's not permanent. Like, we don't have a lot of sources of flat damage. So, like, any other source of flat damage that we can get is going to be very, very useful to us. And it's going to increase our damage dramatically. If you wanted to, you could even go Morning Frost, like stack Dexterity a little bit more, like stack, uh, you know, stack more cold damage, because this is also plus one cold damage to attacks and spells per point of Dexterity, but it's going to be harder to cap your res and stuff like that. Um, ultimately, I don't think I'm going to use this. Uh, Transient Rest makes a lot of sense, but you could technically do something with Morning Frost. Um, so that pretty much covers the skills, right? So let's go into the passives now. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, but we go for intelligence, pretty straightforward. Um, cast speed. Cast speed is, in, is very, very important. The more cast speed we are going to get, the more uh, Glacier we'll be able to dish out in a short amount of time, and the more we're going to be able to, to proc Lost Knowledge and all of our other nodes that gives us ward on skill use and stuff like that, and ward on direct spell cast. So we are getting a lot of ward on every single cast that we do, right? Um, so, that is why cast speed is very important. And then we go for critical strike multi and critical strike chance. Um, you don't actually need this crit chance or this crit multi. You could actually go for the ward retention, but I went for just more damage because I had no problems with tankiness whatsoever. In the sorcerer tree, very important. Calculate destruction, again, for the spell critical strike chance per int. We go for the cast speed per stacks and five maximum arcane momentum stacks. And then we go for the movement speed, um when we get at the maximum arcane stacks, right? So this is going to give us spell damage and movement speed. Movement speed is king, as I said earlier. Um, cold pen, cold damage leech. We don't care about the leech, but we want the cold penetration. This is very good. Lost knowledge, the bread and butter of this build. And then um, rune master. We go on unsealed mana for the cast speed. You might wonder why I'm not using sphere of protection. 8% uh, less damage taken from ignited chakra chilled enemies actually gave me less than 8% extra ward compared to Edict, Edict of Scion. Um, so these points, I think are actually, like, they could be interchangeable, like six points here, two points here that you put into Sphere of Protection. Uh, but I'm getting a bigger EHP pool when I'm going for Edict of the Scion. I was getting like about like 14, 15% extra ward compared to 8% less damage taken. So, I mean, it's up to you what you want to do. I decided to opt for Edict of the Scion instead. Arcane Focus for Int and Ward on Direct Spell Cast. We're casting Glacier all the time, so we're getting a bunch of Ward from this. Uh, ward Gain on Area Skill Use per rune that you have from Ring Invocation. Since we have Ring Invocation, and it's always going to be at three runes, we're going to get a bunch of Ward from that node. Uh, Int with a Catalyst, reduced bonus damage taken from crits. So this is very important alongside some rolls on your gear to mitigate the critical strike damage that you might be taking. Um, critical strike multiplier with a wand. This is just damage because um, wrong warp is a wand. One point in never late just to get the rune of dilation. Uh, so we get the cast speed and the movement speed after using a traversal skill, essentially for the movement speed here. More damage to uh, bosses and rare. Just damage, makes sense, right? And it's always gonna be doubled. Um, eight points so that we get the cooldown recovery speed per four int. And then we also get Intelligent. The 10 flat cold damage. As I said, cold, uh, flat damage is very, very scarce on this build. So you want to get as much as possible anywhere that you can. Um, 4 ward gain on crit. More crit multi. A ward uh, crit multi per 100 ward versus bosses as well. So um, this is like extremely good. And then we have Celestial Doom. Uh, as we talked a bit earlier about the Frost Wall covered to fire. Which is going to apply Brand of Trespass. And that that Brand of Trespass is going to allow us to get more spell damage and ward gain versus bosses. So that pretty much covers the entire uh, the entire build. Um, I've had an extremely, extremely, extremely good time with this build. Um, I think it's becoming one of my favorite builds. I think it's S tier. It's 
extremely fast, extremely good, extremely good to level with. It just it just feels really, really, really good. And the AoE is absolutely massive on the third hit glacier. Um, I hope you enjoy this build. I hope you play it before 1.1 to see if you might like this. I think this would be like a great starter for 1.1 actually. It's like a great all-rounder, which does like it, it would do any and all content in the entire game. I we are getting pinnacle bosses in 1.1. It might not be the absolute best DPS build for bosses, but it is very, very, very well rounded. And I, I am sure you would have a great time um killing the pinnacle bosses with this build. Anyways, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye-bye.